Hello and welcome. Till now, we saw the usage of PyFluent from outside AncestFluent. However, starting with the version 2023 R1, we can in fact run PyFluent commands inside AncestFluent using the Fluent Python console feature. In this lesson, we will provide a brief overview of the Fluent Python console which is a beta capability introduced in ANSYS Fluent version 2023 R1. With an example problem of a static mixer, we will learn how to launch and use Fluent Python console to read a mesh file, set up physics, solve problems and create post-processing surfaces using Python commands. Sounds interesting, right? Let's get started. In ANSYS Fluent version 2023 R1 or later, when launching the Fluent session, you can choose whether the console takes the default TUI or Scheme commands or takes Python commands as shown in the image here. Fluent Python console is built directly into ANSYS Fluent and does not require any additional installation or configuration. If we are familiar with writing Python scripts, those scripts can be directly run from within the Python console. Note that of the three PyFluent packages, that is Core, Parametric and Visualization, Fluent Python console currently only supports PyFluent Core, which allows us to automate meshing, set up the physics, solve, post-process and much more. Now let's see Fluent Python console in action. Let's first launch ANSYS Fluent. In the ANSYS Fluent launcher, click on the checkbox here to enable the beta launcher options and click yes to proceed. Under the general options tab, enable Python console and then click start. Now click on the file menu, navigate to preferences and click on appearance. And if you haven't done this already, we recommend enabling console auto complete. With this setting turned on, ANSYS Fluent proposes the available commands based on the letters we enter in the console. From the console, type solver dot and because we have enabled console autocompleter, we can press tab at any time to see the relevant options for this command. So we see the solver options are listed here. Let's pick file, press dot and tab, pick read mesh to read the mesh file. We can use argument names to check the list of arguments needed. Here, let's use the file name and enter the mesh file name staticmixer.msh.h5 within round brackets and hit enter. Note that the mesh file should be placed in the working directory of Fluent. We see that the mesh file is now loaded. Now to enable the energy model, type solver dot and press tab. Pick setup from the list, then press dot and tab and select models. Again, enter dot and press tab, select energy. Lastly, enter dot and press tab to select enabled and enter equal to true. By default, the turbulence model selected is SSTK Omega model, which is apt for solving this problem. So let's retain the settings. To see the defaults, type in solver.setup.models.viscus with round brackets and execute. Let's go ahead and create the material for the fluid domain. Type in solver.setup.materials with round brackets and execute it to see the materials defined. Air is the default material for the fluid zone and aluminium for the solid zone. Since our problem involves mixing for water, we need to define water for the fluid zone. For that, List the available materials from the Fluent's database. Type solver.setup.materials.database and use the copy by name function and enter the material type and name then execute. Next, assign this material to the fluid zone using solver.setup.cellzoneconditions.fluid and fluid domain within square brackets and material equal to water liquid within round brackets. Use solver.setup.cellzoneconditions.fluid with round brackets to check if the material has been assigned. Let's now set up boundary conditions. Set velocity to 1 meter per second and temperature to 300 Kelvin for velocity inlet 1 
using the code displayed on the screen. Similarly, for velocity inlet 2, set velocity to 1 meter per second and temperature to 350 Kelvin. To look at the other available options, type solver and press tab and pick setup. Press tab and then type boundary conditions with round brackets and press enter. This provides the entire dictionary. We could take this further and just look for boundary conditions for the pressure outlet with get state, add round close brackets and press enter. Now we see the dictionary containing the settings just for the pressure outlet. To change any of these settings, use set state and copy the entire dictionary within brackets. For example, let's change viscosity ratio to 8 and press enter. Now under the boundary conditions tab, pressure outlet, we see that the viscosity ratio is changed to 8. But since we are changing only one of the settings, we don't have to pass the entire dictionary. We can instead retain the command with only the desired setting to be changed. Now set a new value for viscosity ratio, say 9 and press enter. Thus, under the settings, we see the viscosity ratio is now set to 9. Now that we have set up the problem, let's initialize using hybrid initialization. For that, type solver.solution.initialization.hybridinitialize. To set the number of iterations, type solver.solution.runcalculation.iterCount and enter 600. Then start the calculation using the code solver.solution.runcalculation.iterate. Now that the simulation is run to completion, let's see how to create surfaces. In this example case, we will show how point surfaces can be created. For that, type solver. Press tab, pick TUI, enter dot, tab, and select surface. Enter dot, tab, select point surface, and click enter. Now give it a name point test1. Press enter and enter the coordinates. Now under surfaces, we see that the point surface is created and listed. Next, let's create another point surface and enter all these options in one shot. For that, Use those responses to the questions as arguments and apply to this function solver.tui.surface.pointsurface. Now give it a new name, point test2, and enter the same coordinates, then press enter. And that creates a new point surface, point test2, listed under surfaces. Next up, we will see how to create multiple points in one shot. For that, let's use a loop. For i in range at 0, 10, let's go between 0 and 10. Press enter. Just press spacebar 4 times and type print i in round brackets. Let's see what it does by pressing enter. Here we see that it prints the numbers from 0 up to 9. Now let's create another loop and name the points. For i in range 0 to 10, press enter, add space 4 times and copy the same command used previously and change the name to point plus the string format of the number i and here take z equal to 0.0015 minus i upon 10,000 and press enter and enter again. Here you see the points are being created. Now if we display these points we see that the z coordinates are different for each of them because we specified them according to the expression shown here. Note that any setting that we could have conventionally done using the TUI could be automated here with Python using solver.tui. Typical Python commands are also available within the Python console. For example, if we want to see the available options, we can use dir with round brackets and press enter. Similarly, to see options related to solver object, use dir and type solver within the round brackets. We could see them listed here. The help is directly accessible from the Python console by using the code solver.setup. Put this within a help function with round brackets and press enter and we can see the help pertaining to that object. To summarize, we learned how to make use of Fluent Python console to write Python commands. 
we explored how to look for available options in writing commands with the help of a demo problem and learned how to set up and solve a CFD problem. Lastly, we learned how to access the help directly within Fluent Python console. With that, let's wrap it up.